Exaggerations, everybody, and welcome to a brand new trippy food, Livy Striam. Uh, see, I started talking. Doodle comes in because he he knows food. So I I left the door open so that uh, the Prince of Dogness may uh, grace us with his presence. We have a small crowd today. There's something going on today. Not exactly sure what it is. Um, it's growing. We have, we're up to five now, but I only see one in the chat, which is Tom, old guy in Colorado. He was the early bird, so we already showed him to his seat. Um, so we'll, we'll wait a little bit till we uh, till we really get cracking. Uh, hello, Tom. And um, so the thing is that um, the thing is that we called this live stream treasures from the 99 Ranch Market. So if you're unfamiliar with the 99 Ranch Market, the 99 Ranch Market is a chain of Asian groceries. I, I believe, uh, so usually an Asian grocery has a kind of, um, you know, particular influence like H Mart. H Marts are typically uh, Korean. Um, uh, Finbon in, um, um, in Portland is typically Vietnamese. Uh, Wajamaya is typically Japanese or uh, Mitsua is also uh, typically a Japanese market. Now, uh, they have a lot of uh, a lot of those particular products, but they also carry a bunch of different other things from Asia. So 99 Ranch Market, I believe, is Chinese. I could be wrong. Uh, but they carry a wide variety of, um, of Asian products. So uh, so everything that we got today, everything we got for the live stream today is from 99 Ranch Market. Now, if you're, you're probably wondering, like, like I was, uh, is there a 99 Ranch Market near you? Now, I live in Southern California, so there is a buttload which is actually a uh, term, uh, a unit of measurement for measuring uh, the concentration of restaurants, buttload. So there's a buttload of 99 ranch markets in Southern California. I believe there's only one in uh, Oregon, uh, which is in Beaverton. I just love saying Beaverton. Uh, I think there's three in Washington State, but there's a whole bunch in Texas. And there's actually some on the East Coast as well. Uh, it kind of like does this. Uh, there's not a lot in the Midwest, in the upper Midwest especially. But uh, but yeah, they they are um, they are from coast to coast. So um, so if you live near a major city, chances are there is a 99 ranch market near you, and that is where uh, we went shopping for um, all of the treats that we're going to enjoy today. Janice Yana, Yamanaka in the room, welcome, Janice. Good to see you. Uh, still a little bit slow here, so I'm going to wait for uh, a few other people to come into the room before we start getting in uh, reviewing what our snacks and beverages are today. Uh, I remember that before I said that I was only going to do one beverage, just like we do on Trippy Food Beer Night, that we only do one beer. And I said that we were gonna do one soft drink, uh, but I, I found two interesting ones. We're gonna do two, it's not a big deal. We'll do, uh, we'll do one at the beginning, two snacks, and then another one. So I think we did two beers last week anyway, even though one was a non-alcoholic beer, still did two beers. So I'm gonna do so, two soft drinks today. We'll see how that goes. Should be fine. Um, I have a doodle snack. Um, now I was using the just for dogs uh, chicken snacks. These are these are uh, Trader Joe's smoked chicken tenders. And again, the only ingredient is uh, chicken. I, I would think smoke would be an ingredient, but they don't list it. Um, the only ingredient is chicken, just like the other ones. Uh, these are a little harder, a little tougher than the other ones. The other ones are kind of crispy, but you know he likes either one. So we have dog treats in the event that Doodle decides to grace us with it, uh, his, the, the Prince of Dogness uh, decides to grace us with his presence. We have snacks ready for him. Uh, no rules, just eat and drink as many items as you want. Yeah, I guess so. I just want to make sure, I don't want to make sure we don't have too many where we run out of time um, or then, then too few. I have no problem with yapping and yammering on about, you know, nothing. Uh, for you know half an hour or an hour or whatever if we run out of items but um, I, I just like I like to kind of spread it out so that we just have enough to to cover our time and go through our snacks so kind of like that hey dry cell in the room welcome dry cell welcome back good to see you again well you know not see you but see your name and your little um your little avatar which uh it looks like a cat it's really really hard to tell because it's tiny teeny weeny 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 little thing I think mean, even if I used a magnifying glass, I, I wouldn't be able to tell it. It looks like a cat's face. I could be wrong. So correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm okay with that. Hey, doodle in the room, doodle in the room. Right now he just wants to be petted, so he's not like, unless he's begging for food and I'm just reading that wrong. But uh, doodle, we have snacks for you and we will get you some snacks uh, when, we, when we open our first snack. We would not forget about you 
and make sure that make sure that we have snacks for you too. So, oh, he's just like he's just like this. He's so I'm gonna die of adorableness. It's just he's just so adorable. Hey, Scott Mansfield in the room. Welcome, Scott. Good to see you on this. Uh, I was going to say bright and sunny Saturday. It is not a bright and sunny Saturday. It is an overcast Saturday, and that's fine by me. Uh, I, I don't like the oppressive heat of Southern California. Uh, I hate the summers in Southern California. And so when it's uh, overcast like this and everything, that's fine by me. I think it's in, like in the upper 60s. Maybe, maybe it's going to hit 70 today. Perfect. Perfect weather for me. Uh, it's from Legend of Zelda game, LOL. It's a wolf. Oh, okay. Um, which Legend of Zelda game? The original NES Legend of Zelda game? Because I, I, I don't remember the wolves in the original Le Le Legend of Zelda game, but that game has um, that game has evolved, and I think like now it's it's like uh, it's almost like VR, isn't it? I think I don't know. I haven't I haven't played it since it was on NES. So that's how long ago that was. Uh, it, it was bright and sunny here, but now it is cloudy. Yeah, it's cloudy here. Uh, hey, Kaylee, the Pokemon master is back in the room. Summers rarely get to about 90 degrees. That's nice. I like. I, I grew up in uh, Massachusetts. And um, although you would think that Massachusetts would be uh, uh, mild in the summer, um, they, can, they can get some 90-degree temperature. I don't remember very, very, very few times that ever breaking 100 in Massachusetts. But I can remember hot summer nights. You know, <clears throat> walking to the um, convenience store, and it's still hot out at like uh, 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So, um, welcome, uh, welcome to the room, Kaylee. Good to see you again. And Lynn Ada one in the room, our first Canadian, I think, today, right? Uh, did I miss any Canadians, or did I forget that somebody else was Canadian? If not, welcome, Lynn. Good to see you. Always good to see you. The door is wide open for you. My door is always open unless it's closed. I uh, find, find that people in California think 70 is cold. Oh, I, oh, tell me about it. Here, that's approaching holy. <laughs> We're all going to die with it. Yeah, that is, uh, that is funny. Like uh, when I was growing up in Massachusetts, if like let's say in, in January you got a day where it hit 50 degrees, that's shirts and T-shirt weather. I mean shorts and T-shirt weather. Everybody was out shorts and T-shirt when it was 50 degrees in, in, uh, in Massachusetts because it's like, oh, my God, we're going to take advantage of this heat wave where it's 50 degrees. So, yeah, it is pretty funny because usually my my response to that is when somebody from Southern California says, I'm freezing. And I'm like, really? Show me some ice. If you can't show me some ice, it's not freezing. It is not 32 degrees out or, le or less. You know, we're not freezing. But, uh, but yeah, I... I don't know if it has to do with like your blood or your your body temperature or something becomes acclimated to a particular uh, uh, climate and you actually feel really cold when it hits. I you know I honestly don't know. You know I, I would imagine like if you live in equatorial Africa um, or if you live in the Arctic Circle somewhere, you know maybe uh, maybe your physiology adapts to those harsh conditions over you know I mean and I'm talking about over a period of generations you know, perhaps your your body adjust, uh, uh, adapts to those, um, you know, those varying uh, degrees of heat or cold. But, you know, I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but I play one on TV. Uh, hey, Peter Griffin in the room. Peter Griffin. Um, I can't do a Peter Griffin imitation. I'm sorry about that. Still waiting for you to show us the cabinet behind you. Okay, so, so I'm glad you asked that. Uh, let's see, we've got about 14 people. This number, I don't know if that's accurate or not. So if I, if that is accurate, there's 14 people logged in and watching right now. Um, let's see. Uh, so, okay, so so I'll go ahead and address that, and then later on we can bring it up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there uh, for you guys to answer. So Peter was asking. I think he asked on um, on a um, like on, on a comment in one of the videos and he was saying like like oh are we gonna be able to see what's in this cabinet you can see that there's a lot of things in that cabinet right so i could i could basically you know tell you what what's in there there's just not enough time um there's there's way too many things to do a um to do a uh trippy food episode on on everything that's in the cabinet now obviously i'm not going to go over the cds because they're just music cds i've got a bunch over here as well so I'm not going to go over the CDs, but everything else, it would take a long time to uh, to do it on an episode and to just tell you what it is. So here's my thought or my idea. I'm going to throw this out there. You guys tell me what you think. Um, would you be up for me doing 
a live stream where we cover what's you know what's in there. And I think we'd have to do it like a shelf at a time. Because I, I imagine that's going to take two hours to do this whole shelf here, and maybe two hours to do this shelf, shelf as well. There's a lot of stuff on that shelf. It's it's hard to tell from here, but you know there's a lot of little things there, and um, most of no no I would say all of those things are either things that I've encountered in my travels or things that I've encountered like food wise, uh, and those are kind of the souvenirs from them. So uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there, and I'm gonna ask you guys, uh, would you be up for a um a live stream where we just basically cover everything that's you know that's on one of the shelves or both of the shelves or whatever um we'd have to uh we'd have to limit the snacks obviously because there'd be too much you know talking about this stuff maybe we could do it on a trippy food beer night um we'd have to uh we'd have to limit the snacks obviously because there'd be too much you know talking about this stuff maybe we could do it on a trippy food beer night we open a beer at the beginning of it we could sip the beer during the during the thing but i'm going to leave it up to you Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. What do you guys think of doing a trippy food live stream uh, on what's on these shelves? Uh, let me know. Or two live streams. Like like I said, it could take a while. So maybe two live streams. Let me know. Uh, what did I miss here? Uh, it's 55 here in Maine. We're going to be wearing shorts and flip-flops. Yeah, absolutely. Now, same, the same in Massachusetts. The Habit has a new brunch burger. It's really good. You should review it if possible. What, what, uh, what constitutes a brunch burger? Do they put a fried egg on it? A fried egg and bacon, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that, but uh, but yes, uh, I I would I would review that. I like to have it. Have it's really good. Uh, some stuff, some stuff. Uh, I've had their. Um, I think it's like a pastrami sandwich, and uh, sometimes their grilled sandwiches have a tendency to be greasy. I don't know if they like put too much butter on the grill or something, and so their sandwiches tend to be their grilled sandwiches tend to be a little bit greasy sometimes. But we'll see. I will look into that dry salt. Thank you very much. Hey, Philip Gerard in the room. Uh, hola, ciao, and what's up? What's up? What's up, brother Phil? Uh, so uh, Philip Gerard, my brother, in the room. Uh, just so that you know, um, uh, Philip has inadvertently introduced me. Well, I mean, I knew I knew his son, my nephew, anyways. But um, he sent me a video that he made. Uh, uh, that his son made and it was just basically he sent it to um to philip to say hey i got the stuff that you sent me here's me eating it and everything and i watched the video and i go like he's good he's good on camera he's he's descriptive on what he's eating and everything and um so i reached out to him and i said hey would you like to do um you know some trippy food videos and he agreed to that and so um so i would imagine we're gonna see maybe maybe a couple in the next in the next few weeks we're gonna do a couple videos with um with the other Philip Gerard, which is the, uh, I, I guess we can't really call him Junior, but uh, the other Philip Gerard, which is uh, my nephew, uh, we'll be doing some stuff with him coming up. Oh, also, um, Monday we have um, we have a uh, video with uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado, coming up, uh, and we're going to be filming some more next week for the following week. Um, we're planning some stuff. We're working with uh, Janet Yamanaka, and we're working with. Um, Rob Switch uh, on some other uh, uh, collaborations, and we're going to be doing some of the stuff very, 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 very soon with Reckless Eating. So a lot of stuff coming, a lot of cool stuff coming up. You're going to try the TGI Fridays whiskey burger that Matt Zion tried. Uh, maybe. Uh, one of the things that I want, that I did want to try, that's not getting a lot of um, press, I guess, is um, Red Lobster has a. Um, a Wagyu burger, a Wagyu burger at Red Lobster, which is really weird because Red Lobster is supposed to be seafood, I think, but they have a Wagyu burger. So I'm, I'm interested in trying that. Um, there was another one that somebody's doing that, um, that I was looking to do it too. So a lot of those things coming up. Uh, Lynn 801 says, yes. Janice Yamanaka says, yes. Philip Gerard says, I'd watch. Uh, Tom says, I would watch you paint your walls, Val. Go. Cool. Uh, Dry Cell says, thumbs up. Um, yeah, okay, so let's do that. So let's plan on doing that. Uh, next week is a trippy food beer night anyway, so so we will do that. We will we will call it the What's on Val Shelf live stream, and we'll just cover all the items that are on that shelf. And um, because there's stories behind them, we'll, we'll take questions about them. You guys can ask about them and stuff, and I think it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, just not as much snacks, but uh, but we will have a beer. And then, and, and then if it, it stretches into the next week, which I think it probably will, you know, 
like I said, I think maybe a shelf at a time. Uh, then, um, you know, then we'll do a soft drink next week you know, or two. We'll, we'll figure it out. I just reviewed the brunch burger from The Habit. The review should be up in a couple of days. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, um, uh, Janice, if I'm going to review it, then I won't watch yours. Only I, 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 This is what I do. If I know that somebody else has reviewed something, I have a tendency not to watch it, only because I just don't want it to um, – I just don't want it to influence my take on it. Um, so uh, you said that. Let's see. You said yours going to be up in a couple of days. I don't know that I'm going to. I'm going to be able to get to mine and have it up in a couple of days. So I'm going to hold off on watching yours, Janice, until I do mine, and then I will watch yours. And and yeah. because, like I said, it's. Uh, I just don't. I just don't like to be influenced by something else. I see. Before we continue, I just want to ask you guys. How is the video? How is the audio? Um, unfortunately, if the audio is like not great, uh, I'm not going to mess with it because of what happened last week. So any of you who were in last week's stream remember that I tried to plug in a um, headset mic and then there was no volume whatsoever. And then I got locked out of the stream and I couldn't get back in and I started another one and then I killed the original one. And when I killed the original one, I killed the second one and we ended up with three streams. Uh, long story short, I'm not going to mess with it too much. If I can mess with the volume, I can do that. So if you're getting a lot of distortion, I can try to mess with the volume. Uh, or if it's not loud enough, I can try to boost it a little bit. But I'm not going to play around with like different sources or anything. But just want to ask you guys, how's the video? How's the audio? Thumbs up, thumbs in the middle, thumbs down. Because that's how we roll here. Thumbs, you know. <laughs> Tybalt, I will not mess with the audio again. Uh, video, uh, Snorkel says, Snorkel, did I say hello to you, Snorkel? Um, I get caught up, I get yapping, and I don't see who sneaks into the room. So if I did not snorkel, welcome. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, Val, do you prefer macaroni salad or potato salad? I don't prefer either. Uh, it's just what I happen to be in the mood for or what I think, you know, goes with you know, with which. Um, when I had the macaroni, I think, Scott, you're, you might be referring to when I had the macaroni salad at the, um, at the Woolworth Diner in Bakersfield. It's just because I don't usually see macaroni salad on the menu. Now, as Matt said, in either it was in either in his video or on uh, in the reckless eating video or on our video, where he said, "Oh, Ono Hawaiian, you probably had it Ono Hawaiian." I don't know if it was Ono Hawaiian, but the last time I had macaroni salad was actually in a Hawaiian, you know, one of the Hawaiian grills, uh, because that's a, on a Hawaiian plate dinner that they usually put macaroni salad on there. So that would be the last time I did. But it's but it's rare to find it in other restaurants. And that's why I went with the macaroni salad. You know, not that not not that it was my preference or anything. It's just that it's rare to find it. And so I like to change it up every once in a while. But I like both. Um, as far as potato salad goes, I prefer the German potato salad, which I don't think has any mayonnaise in it. it has some vinegar in it, has onion in it. Um, and um, it's not as mushy. Um, the German potato salad. I like the German potato salad, but I do like, you know, uh, I do like a good old fashioned, you know, uh, barbecue back backyard cookout potato salad as well. So like I said, it depends on what I'm in the mood for. Uh, everything looks and sounds okay though. Okay, Tom, I'm gonna, I'm not messing with anything then. No, I'm not gonna mess with it. So somebody here says, hey, your voice sounds a little bit tinny. I'll be like, well, you're gonna have to get used to it. You know, or, you know, give me something to work on afterwards, but we're not messing with it during the stream. Grub, grub rap, uh, welcome to the room. I, uh, what, what drew attention to the fact that you came in is that you're a bright green avatar. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking to, I just see this bright green, draws my eyes to it. Maybe that's the purpose of that. So well done, if that's the case. But welcome to the room, grub rap. Um, audio is fine, don't touch anything. Janice, I will not. I promise I'm not touching a thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, the habit is very underrated. When I want a burger, it's my go-to. Yeah, dry sauce. Same here. Um, I prefer it much, much prefer it to um, In and Out. And this could start a big war, uh, especially with people from Southern California on In and Out. In and Out is 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 vastly overrated. I mean, here's the thing: it is a good burger. If you compare it to uh, Burger King and McDonald's, it's a it's a very good burger, especially at that price po price point. But once you start like going a little bit higher and on the price point and everything, uh, then other ones start to be better. And I, I prefer the habit to um, to in and out any day. Uh, the my main gripe about um, in in and out is that uh, it's a it's a three ounce patty. It's this skinny little thing. 
And the thing is, is, is they say they can cook it to order, right? So you can go in there and you can say, hey, can I get it medium rare? And they will try to do a medium rare for you. Now, this won't happen in all in and outs because I've been to some in and outs where they don't do that. I've been to some in and outs where they go, oh, we can only do it medium well. I'm like, wow, really? Okay. Um, but I've been to some where they go, oh, yeah, okay, we'll do it medium rare. So here's the problem. It's a skinny three-ounce burger patty. So they slap it on the grill. Maybe they leave it on there for 10, 15 seconds or something. They scoop it up. They flip it over. Because it is so thin, as soon as they flip it over, you know, after, after like 10 or 15 seconds, it's already cooked all the way through. So it's already at least medium. And, and if they leave it on there a little bit longer, it's like medium well. So, uh, so even if you ask them to, and even if they say they'll, they'll, they will try, they almost never get, get it to medium rare. You know, I've been surprised at some of the other places that, that um, some of the other burger places where I, use, where I say, can I get that medium rare? And they go, yeah, okay. Really surprises me. The thing is, if the burger joint has frozen patties, they, they have to, I think by law, serve it medium medium well because they have to um, they have to know that it's cooked all the way through and that's why they do it medium well uh, but it's usually if they're using frozen meat if they're not using frozen meat I don't think they have to do that I could be wrong uh, at least when when I was in Montreal that's what uh, one of the restaurants told me they said we have to do it medium well because it's frozen and we have to make sure it cooks all the way through they're very honest in Canada as you probably figured out. Philip Gerard, retract whenever I see message retracted, it always makes me think, ooh, I wonder what that was. Now, however, if it wasn't family friendly, then best to leave it retracted, I guess. Um, I remember I had these breadsticks from Cheesecake Factory. Once it was bread, cheese, and bake. Oh my God, in, in the breadstick? Holy cow. Um, I like the little breads they serve at the Cheesecake Factory, but I like that. Um, I don't know if it's a pumpernickel, but it's like a, it's a dark... Bread. I think it might be a pumpernickel. It doesn't taste like there's rye in it though, but that's really good. And they're always hot, spongy, right out of the oven. Just so so good. So you know, Cheesecake Factory. I mean, a lot of stuff at Cheesecake Factory is just okay. It's like a Fridays or something like that. But some of the stuff is really really good. Um, my my attitude towards restaurants, even like Cheesecake Factory, is always look for the strangest thing on the menu. You know, uh, so my thing is when I when I go out to eat with people. If I'm the one making the suggestion, I'm going to go to some place that has unusual food. If not, um, then I'm going to look on the menu and try to find the most unusual, unusual thing on the menu. And if I've been there before, I'm going to try something that I haven't eaten before. So, uh, And that's my advice to you, just so that you can uh, try different things. So uh, always try different things. Always try things, uh, especially before you say, ew, um, ew, what do you mean ew? I don't like spam. Um, is macaroni salad not really big out there? Um, well, like I said, um, you know, there's a there's a huge concentration of, you know, Hawaiian restaurants out here, and you'll always find macaroni on a plate salad. But in other places, no, it's not really a big thing. I would say growing up, we ate a lot of macaroni salad, but it's what we ate at home. It's like my mom would make macaroni salad. Sometimes she'd make macaroni salad. Sometimes she'd make potato, potato salad and everything. But but in fi finding it in restaurants uh, is is a rarity, certainly out here. Anyways, Amy Cakey in the room. Good to see you, Amy Cakey, and early. So uh, welcome, Amy. Good to see you again. Uh, no, uh, Jewel, uh, Jules or Julie is not here, Philip. Um, she uh, she and the family went to um, Universal in Florida, and I don't know if they're back yet. They may be on their way back. So uh, she's not here yet. We may, she may pop in and see it, or she may actually be, they may actually be on the road because they drove, they drove down. They may actually be on the road and she may be watching on her, on her phone. So, uh, welcome Samuel Duran, Duran, um, and the Jay Leno thing. Um, yeah, for me, I don't, I don't necessarily see it. Uh, I see why other people see it. I, I, I'm, I'm trying. If anybody out there knows Jay Leno or knows Jay Leno's management or something, talk to them about having him come on the show because I, I just want to see us side by side and then, uh, and then for people to, you know, to, to see that I really don't look like him too much. Maybe I have a lot of his mannerisms. Uh, maybe I, maybe I kind of talk like him. Um, maybe I do look like him a little bit, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I'll take it. I just, you know, I just don't see what other people see as far as the Jay Leno thing. So, 
Uh, not a few chain of uh, habit, but the burger does taste better, and ooh, the fries are way better. Everybody's, everybody's fast food fries are better than In-N-Out. It's because In-N-Out does not prepare them properly, and we can get into a very, very long discussion about it, but, but that's the end of the story. They do not prepare them properly. There are people who say, well, get it animal style. If you have to, if you have to disguise the fact that your French fries aren't that good by putting all kinds of stuff on top of it. Yeah. Um, the other thing is uh, somebody says, get it well done. And all well done gets you is a, you know, a overcooked, uh, starchy, pasty French fry. So, uh, yeah, uh, th that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Ari Friedman in the room. Is it Friedman? Friedman. Friedman or Friedman? Uh, Ari, let me know, but we're going to call you Ari anyways, but uh, welcome to the room, Ari. Good to see you. Uh, it was bread slices, basically. Oh, that, well, I guess it would have to be if you're going to put the cheese and the bacon and the truffle and the marinara and stuff on it. It would have to be slices, I think. You couldn't bring out like the little, you know, the little tiny loaf and uh, put all those stuff on it, uh, Kaylee. So, yeah. I misspelled here as here, so I retracted my statement and reposted. Well, that's, that's very... Um, that's very um, correct of you, I guess. And I don't mean politically correct. I just mean like, you know, um, grammatically correct. So um, I had the cookie dough cheesecake from there and could only eat half. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of cookie dough. I I'm trying to think of the if we've done a video. Yes, um, I think it was the L.A. County, uh, the L.A. County Fair. Um, and I think it was on the reckless eating um video from the LA County Fair where we do deep fried fried dough and and I I I announce my dislike for fried dough there. So get a cardboard Jay Leno. I could do that, I suppose. That'd be fun. But then I'd have to get a cardboard everybody else that I look like. Like uh I can't remember the guy's name, but there's a um there's a a um Pakistani general that apparently I look like. Um there's the guy from uh Storage Wars that I look like. Uh, there's um, Rick Beato that I apparently look like, you know, so I'd have to start getting all kinds of cardboard cutouts. That could be fun, though, having a background of all, you know, all cutouts of people that I look like. That'd be fun. Uh, I feel like I gave myself diabetes looking at that cheesecake. Yeah, that, that stuff is really, really sweet. Uh, the Y is Polish, so it is an E. So it's Friedman. Oh, OK. All right, cool. I got that right. I like when I get it right. Uh, wow, my, my thing just flashed really. I'm still there, right? I'm still there. Okay, cool. Uh, time to go over the snacks. Thank you, Jenna's keeping me on track. Uh, Jay Leno might come if he sees your music video. Matt played part of it on live stream. Didn't know you were in a band. Uh, yes, Ty Vault. Um, uh, that's one of the things that, um, I will say, uh, if you want to see the, uh, the video or the videos, uh, go on YouTube and do a search for, um, for notice. Uh, don't hang up and uh, Valentino Herrera. So uh, do a search for those things and it should come up with, actually there's a few videos. We did a few videos and you, you'll be your bills in there. So check that out, Tybalt. Do a uh, uh, YouTube search. Um, notice Valentino Herrera. Don't hang up and it'll, it should bring you to those videos. So uh, one cardboard guy a year. Oh, or how about every, like, every six months? Because otherwise you'd be waiting forever for him. Let's cover the snacks. Thank you, Janice. So again, the title of this live stream was Treasures from 99 Ranch Market because we got these all at 99 Ranch Market. And if you just came into the room and weren't here at the beginning, 99 Ranch Market is a chain uh, grocery, uh, large grocery store that is, um, I believe, Chinese, uh, but they have all kinds of different Asian products. And um, there, there may be one near you if you live near a major city from Washington State down up around Texas and then back up to New England. I think the closest, I mean, the farthest north on the East Coast is in the Boston area. I'm not sure exactly where. Um, there's none in the middle of the country. I don't know why. It's kind of a weird thing. But uh, we did. Uh, thank you, Philip. Um, I try. Uh, close to 99 Ranch to me is Quincy. Ma oh, that's where it is. Okay. So I did see on the map that there is one in Massachusetts, but I wasn't sure exactly where. So it is in, in uh, Kaylee, I'm going to say Quincy, but I know it's Quincy. Um, yeah, a couple of hours. Okay, yeah, South Shore. Let's go over our snack, shall we? So uh, our, our, I'm going to start with sweet to savory to strong tasting. 
And a lot of these I had to do some research on because, you know, some of them don't really have a lot of English writing on them and I have to try to figure out what they are and et cetera. So the first one, we'll start, we'll start sweet to savory. So the first one is uh, these, uh, I think Happy Star is the brand, but Happy Star could be the product itself. And these are chocolate corn crackers. Uh, let's see, Happy Star chocolate corn crackers. They are made in New Taipei City, Taiwan. That's it. That's all the information I have on that. Uh, hey, Stoner Kitchen in the room. You snuck in there. Yeah, Stoner Kitchen is a big fan of uh, Notice. So uh, Stoner, is Don't Hang Up the only song that you've seen? Or have you watched the other videos that are up there as well? So if you go to that same site, actually, um, the place where the videos are, uh, are on, um, I think Bruno Papamier is his name, uh, is his name on, on YouTube. He was the drummer for uh, for Notice, and he's the drum. He's featured in those videos. Uh, so our drummer at the time, who was from France, is uh, is in those videos, and that, that's that's the web the uh, YouTube channel where you actually see those. Uh, post the link. I couldn't find the videos. I will do that. Um, we'll do. We'll we'll figure we'll figure it out. Uh, if I don't do it uh, today, if we don't have time to do it today. Then I will definitely do it next week. But just remind me, Amy, and we will take care of that. Number two on our hit parade. I just love the packaging on this. The packaging just shouted out me like, you need to buy these. I know, and I wasn't even sure what they were until I looked a bit closer. Now, you got, you know, uh, crab claws or lobster claws or, you know, whatever those are, those happen are. Nice face. It, was, it looks like um, looks like somebody in a shrimp or a lobster costume. Uh, uh, the shape of the bag is just like really odd. It's funny because I don't. OK, well, that's just that's just flattened out. But it's just kind of it's pillowy. I just love I love the packaging and it, it, it attracted to me to it. So these are Beatles, the Beatles prawn crackers, the from the Beatles. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's George, but uh, maybe it's Ringo. I don't know. Um, they're Beatles and spelled the same way as the Beatles. Beatles prawn crackers. And these are from the Shandong Gaotong Aeon Food Company in Gaotong, China. Uh, now, here's the thing. What attracted to me is the packaging. Now, I don't know if it's the packaging or what's in it, but if any of you are familiar with Proposition 65, in California, there's a proposition that states that you have to state if there is any, if there is any material, any chemical or whatever in the product or the packaging that is hazardous to your health. It doesn't mean you can't put it in there. It just means that you have to state it uh, if you're going to sell it in the state of California. And so there is a Cal, uh, California Proposition 65 warning on here, and it says, consuming this product can expose you to chemicals including lead and cadmium, which are known by the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects. So good and so good for you. So um, this could be our last episode eating prawn crackers. Let's hope not. Okay, so there's number two. Uh, let's see, what was it just before notice? I remember you changed the name, but can't remember what was prior. So um, we went through a few different changes. I think it was probably Nightwatch before notice, and then before Nightwatch, it was 411. It was essentially the same band. Or at least we had this, the, the same core people, which was me, lead vocals, uh, Larry Novak, um, keyboards, and Frank Herrera, my brother on bass, his brother, as they say. Um, and, um, and it was, that was the core of all three of those bands. But I think we, we initially called it 411 and then we went to Nightwatch and then we went to Notice, but, um, uh, all, it's really the same band. Uh, Stoner, I like, I like Bad Timing. I like Bad Timing too. That's one of my favorite Notice songs is Bad Timing. Um, so, and, and I'm not just saying that because I helped write that one. Number three on our list of hit parade snacks from the 99 Ranch Market is... Uh, let's see. Jack and Jill, chicharron ni mang muang. Uh, no pork, vegetarian chicharron. Now, I try to do a translation of this little thing down here, uh, which says uh, especial. Well, that's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, Sukati silly. And I'm probably pronouncing that all wrong. I don't know if you guys can see that writing. And if anybody of you know, what is that? Uh, Phil, I think it's... Uh, it's um, uh, a Filipino dialect, maybe Tagalog. I don't know. But uh, if, if anybody knows what that means, please let me know. Uh, but these are no pork vegetarian uh, chicharron. So they are 
Um, my understanding is they are not vegan, but they are vegetarian. And um, they just look really, really interesting. I have no idea what flavor this is. There's some, uh, there's some Thai chilies down there. So I think they're supposed to be hot. I hope so. And, but I don't know what this thing is. Uh, it looks like a, a, a jar of milk with chilies floating in it. I have no idea. Maybe it's coconut milk. I don't know. But we'll see. They look interesting. They look good. We're going to try them. Uh, let's see. Did I miss something? Uh, okay. So Janice is telling everybody what to search for. And uh, Janice, did you find them doing that search? Uh, speaking of dudes named Frank, had to put my dad on Facebook again for getting borderline threatening with the QAnon theories. Mm, yeah, that's. Uh, uh, we're, we won't get too much into politics here, but uh, but um, the past the past few years has been very challenging in families where people with um, with different ideologies. This has been very challenging to say the least. Um, I would have thought Bahasa Indonesia, maybe, you know, maybe, but uh, but I, they're manufactured in the Philippines. I just assume they were a Filipino product. I could be wrong, but you know, how often does that happen, right? <clears throat> what are they made out of? Well, let's look at the ingredients. Ooh, that is a long list of ingredients. Let's see, dehydrated green peas, um, vegetable oil, tapioca starch, dehydrated potatoes, yeah, you have potatoes, tapioca, and uh, peas. That's interesting. Uh, seasonings, natural flavor, sequestrant. I have no idea what sequestrant is, but it's sodium dicetate, uh, rusk powder, sugar, natural spice, anti-caking agent, um, silicon dioxide, corn oil, iodized salt, natural spices, garlic, ground, silling, Labuyo, I don't know what that is. Onion, chili, monosodium glutamate, stabilizer, calcium carbonate, flavor enhancer, disodium guanolate, disodium isonate, and antioxidant. Antioxidant, cool, they're good for you. Uh, butylated hydroxyanosol, butylated hydroxyanosol, propyl gallate. Allergy statements contains wheat. Apparently, it doesn't contain milk, and it doesn't contain um, soy, and it doesn't contain um, peanuts, or whatever else people are allergic to. So that's number three. Let's see. Have to skip back just to make sure. I, I You know what I make? And I, I want you guys to keep me honest. So, like, I want to respond to anybody, everybody. I want to make sure that I, that I respond and I don't neglect to respond. Uh, maybe when we have, like, you know, uh, half a million followers, I mean, uh, subscribers, maybe this will be a little bit more difficult. But for now, I think I should be able to get to everybody. But if I miss somebody, please either either throw it back out there again or somebody else bring up, you know, hey, you didn't answer so-and-so's question. Let me know. I want to make sure I get to everybody. Um, let's see. What do you think about Guy Fieri? Okay. Th hold that thought. We'll get to that in a second. Uh the last and, and not least, uh, I don't know if this is the product or the company name. You can see that there. Uh, I believe that's Guoba. Guoba? Guo probably Guoba. Guoba. Uh, these are made uh, by Don, uh, Dongguan City Sherg, Sherg. Maybe I'm pronouncing that wrong. Food in Dongguan City, China. And these are Guawang Shiguang. That's what they are. They're they're guawang shiguang, which are crab and salted egg yolk rice chips. I don't know if that's the name for crab and salt salted egg yolk rice chips, but that's what it says this is. Gua Wang Shiguang. And if any of you speak Chinese, you can let me know. Did I say that right? Or if you know what that means, you know, what does that mean? So um, let's cover our beverages. And then we're going to get back to Stoner. I'm not forget about you. We're going to talk about that. So uh, let's see. Which one do I want to do first? I think I'm going to do this one first. So uh, this is uh, the company is Sangaria, not Sangria, Sangaria Melon Ramu Bottle. Uh, and this is made by, um, well, actually, it's, it's distributed, I think, by uh, Sangaria USA and Torrance, California. But it, the company is in Osaka, Japan. Now, uh, because it says Ramu bottle, I'm assuming this is a Ramun, 
uh, I think it's Ramun, Rama, you see the Ramun or Ramune, but I think it's Ramun. Um, and so Ramun, if you haven't had it before, is a Japanese carbonated soft drink introduced in 1884 in Kobe by, and not Kobe Bryant, uh, in Kobe by Scottish pharmacist Alexander Cameron Sim. Uh, Ramune uses cod neck bottles after inventor Hiram Cod. They are made of glass and sealed with a marble. The cod head is held in place by the pressure of the carbonation in the drink. To open the bottle, plastic devices used to push the marble inward is provided. The marble rattles around while drinking, resulting in the drink sometimes called marble soda outside of Japan. Now, this doesn't look like that because usually the uh, Ramune is, comes in a uh, glass bottle and you can actually see the little, the little marble in there. So if you don't know how to drink that, like most, most people who, who aren't familiar with it, they'll open up the bottle and then they'll go to drink it and you can't drink it because that marble is in the way and you've got to try to figure out. So some people like stick their tongue in the bottle and try to push the marble down and everything. But there's, a, I think it's on the lid. There's a little thing to push the marble down. You do that and then, you know, bada boom, bada bing, bada fuko, you, you know, you get to drink your, your beverage. This to me doesn't look like it's going to have one of those marbles in it and everything, but I could be surprised. At least I know what to expect on this one. And this is melon flavored carbonated soft drink with real sugar. So looking forward to that. It sounds like it's probably going to be tasty. It's always said as Rumone. See, I was way off. Rumone. Thank you very much, Kaylee. Uh, Val, have you heard of bakery called 85 Degrees? I have. Uh, they do a um, salted caramel coffee, I think. I tried that once. I, I probably do an episode on that. There's one, um, I think the closest one to here might be in uh, Pasadena. We'll do an episode at, at, at 85 degrees and we'll get some, uh, we'll get some nice, uh, interesting baked goods and, and one of those disgusting salted caramel coffees. Uh, description is less than understandable than the word, but basically a sequestrant is a food additive which improves the quality. Why don't they just say that? A food additive, that, you know, suppressant sounds like, like uh, I mean, sequestrant sounds like something like we take this stuff out or we, you know, this wraps this thing in a, in a I don't know. It just, it sounds really scientific. I don't know. Um, I've had Rumone. Thank you. Um, Kaylee, I've had Rumone before. It's hard to open and I see it like a watered down Sprite. Yeah, well, we'll find out. But this is melon flavored, so I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, there's, they have dozens and dozens of different flavors. I guess it's based on the color of it because they're all different colored. I know the bottle is a different color. I think it's actually the the, the uh, liquid that's inside the bottle, different different colors, different flavors, all kinds of flavors. So we'll see. It. We'll see if this matches that. I actually had one before in the glass bottle because the, uh, I did a challenge on reckless eating. Basically, he gave it to, I think, three, Matt gave it to three people who had never had it before and said, okay, whoever can drink the contents of this bottle first wins. And everybody was trying to figure out how to bypass that marble and everything. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, I think the weirdest, I'm going to have to learn how to say it the right way, Rumone. The, uh, the weirdest Rumone flavor I had was either Blue Hawaii or Cola. Yeah, how is Blue Hawaii a, a flavor? You know, like, do, do they do they find something blue in Hawaii? What is blue Hawaii? How is that a flavor? That's like, what is your, uh, like, uh, what is the song uh, by the Rolling Stones, You Can't Always Get What You Want, where he says, my favorite flavor, cherry red? Che che just say cherry. Like, why red? You know, cherry red is a flavor. Actually, it's pronounced ramune, the way the Japanese pronounce lemonade. Yeah, you know, oh, I did, uh, Janice, uh, uh, funny you mentioned that because I did see something where that was really where the name came from was was by the uh, Japanese pronunciation of lemonade. So Ramune. Okay. Oh, Ramune. I think that's what I said. So I don't know. Um, uh, let's see. Kaylee, between you and Amy, you're gonna, you guys are going to have to fight that out. Um, um, I might say Ramune. I might forget. I don't know. Well, whatever we call it, you guys know what it is. It's basically blue Hawaiian punch from what I see. Maybe, Kaylee, but what is blue? What flavor is blue? You know, you could say blue Hawaiian punch, but what is blue? Is it blue? Is it like black raspberry? Is it is it blue? What is it? What is blue? What flavor is blue? I don't know. All right. Uh, so our second beverage, and I haven't forgotten about the, the Guy Fieri thing. We will get to that. Uh, our second beverage, uh, this is... I'm, I'm reading this side, like that's really not going to help me because that's in Thai. I can't read Thai. Um, our second beverage is uh, Taste Nirvana Thai Tea. 
Uh, this is made in, uh, this is made by Nakon Pathom. I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong. I mean, sorry, in, it's made in Nakon Pathom, Thailand. The company is Taste Nirvana. And, um, and it's a Thai iced tea. Now, there were some other Thai iced teas that I was looking at that were already made in the bottle. Now, typically, they make, you know, if you order one in a Thai restaurant, they bring it to your table and it kind of looks like a lava lamp because they're mixing everything together. If I'm not mistaken, and I sometimes am, if I'm not mistaken, they use um, uh, condensed milk in it. Um, but I could be thinking of like a Vietnamese iced tea as well. Um, but I think they have condensed, uh, condensed milk in it. Uh, this was the only one that had actually milk powder in it. So it was made with milk powder. The other ones were like, didn't even have any dairy in it at all. So that's why I chose this particular one. Now, uh, a friend of mine who is uh, Thai said, this is really good and I'm going to like it. So, uh, and that was after she saw the picture and told me that I was going to like it. So I'm looking forward to it. Blue raspberry. It, but is like, Peter, have you ever heard of a blue raspberry? Have you ever seen a blue raspberry? I have seen uh, red raspberries, and I have seen black raspberries. I have never seen a blue raspberry, so I don't know what the hell that is. Um, but I think you're right. I think typically when you do see something that you know has blue in it, it is a like a raspberry flavor. But blue raspberry? Don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Some tropical blue drinks are coconut. See, there you go. It's like what you know. There's there's no there's no regulation for what blue flavor is. All right, so we covered all our beverages. Uh, I think that's good, right? We're good. Uh, so we are we are 45 minutes in. We should probably get started. Uh, so we're gonna do um, beverage, two snacks, beverage, two snacks. How about that? That sounds sound good to everybody. Um, just just really quickly on because this could turn into a long discussion. Um, I think it was Stoner. Were you asking about? Um, about Guy Fieri, my opinion of Guy Fieri is he takes a lot of crap. Uh, he is kind of an easy target. The thing is, he's a, he's kind of a blue collar kind of guy. He's like a kind of guy you would want to hang around and have a beer with and everything. And so really nobody expects that if you go to one of his restaurants that you're going to be getting, you know, like uh, five star Michelin cuisine. You know, honestly, I would not expect a uh, I would not go to a. Um, I would not go to a Guy Fieri restaurant and expect it to be any better or worse than like a Friday's or a Chili's. That's that's what I think it is. That's that's kind of the audience that it caters to. As far as Guy Fieri himself, he think he takes a lot of unnecessary crap because Guy Fieri is like uh, he does so much for other people. So in terms of people who who have been out of work, uh, especially like restaurant workers and everything um, during COVID. He has contributed to. Um, he has um, he has uh, paid people for, uh, who are out of work because of COVID and everything uh, in the in the restaurant industry. Um, he uh, he regularly uh, does charities and um, and does a lot of things for uh, for charities. He uh, as far as the diners, drive-ins, and dives, or I, I don't know the, the, the three Ds uh, that show. He puts a lot of people on the map that otherwise would not be on the map and everything. And he keeps a lot of those places afloat. So he might go into some mom and pop place and um, and brings attention to the fact that they're making some really good stuff, not necessarily like really expensive stuff, but really unique and very good stuff. I have been in many restaurants that he has gone to, especially where I've gone in afterwards and I see up on the wall, it says Guy Fieri was here. Um, and and I can vouch for the fact that the, that the food that he had in those places were really, really good, really unique, um, home, almost like homemade, very, very good, good food. And so he does a great service to these restaurants by, um, by keeping them in business and, uh, and putting them on the map. Now you could say he does a disservice if it gets too popular and then they can't keep up with the, you know, the amount of people that go there and everything. But in general, I think he does a great, a great service. So, so people who, um, people who rag on, on him, I think it's unnecessary. I think it's overdone, uh, especially if you go to uh, uh, Pete Wells of the New York Times did a review of his restaurant in Times Square and he trashed, totally trashed him. And everyone thought it was funny that he was trashing uh, Guy Fieri and everything. And it's like the thing I would I would want to say to Pete Wells is, would you go to a Friday's and do a, uh, you know, a New York Times food review on a Friday's like like you're just picking an easy target. Um, that everybody was getting getting a laugh out of him uh, picking on um, on Guy Fieri. I just think it's stupid. I think it's unnecessary. I think Guy Fieri's 
I think he's a great guy. I don't know him personally. I would love to hang out with that guy. I would love to have him on our show. So that's my that's my take on Guy Fieri. A little bit long-winded, but you know, you brought it up. So uh, I think he's a good host, but his food isn't that great. No, uh, Stoner. I don't. I wouldn't think his food would be that great. I, like I said, I think his food is probably on par with like Fridays or um, or uh, Chili's or something along those lines. But uh, you know, he, he's not he's not claiming to be uh, Julia Child or anything. So. Oh, yeah, Ty Balf. That's the thing is, like, people don't know that he does all that stuff. Uh, they just rag on him and, you know, trash him because he's kind of, like, rednecky and stuff. But, but no, he's a, he's a, I mean, he does some amazing stuff. He's a really cool guy. He helps out a lot of uh, restaurants and restaurant people and everything. And um, I have no complaint to him whatsoever. Uh, tried two restaurants that he went to, one in Temecula and one in Anaheim. Yeah, um, exactly, Amy. And, and you can vouch for the fact that both of those, both of those restaurants that you went to that he went to, Really, really good food, right? I have not been in a restaurant, uh, even for trippy food. If you look at some of the trippy food episodes, some of those are, are restaurants that Guy Fieri have been to. Never been to one where I've, I've, I've said like, oh my God, this is so overrated, the food. Absolutely not. So there we go. He charges way more than Fridays though. He does, but he's a celebrity too. You know, Friday, there's no celebrity chef named Fridays. He is a celebrity chef, so he charges more. So, so I guess Stoner, what would be accurate to say is his food is overpriced. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, got, th there are very few places that Guy Theory hasn't been, uh, Kaylee. So uh, let's start in with our snacks. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Beverage. We'll do the beverage first and we're going to do the Ramune first. I hope I said that right again. I don't know. Uh, we will do car. I'm you know what? Uh, I don't know where the Cassandra has been. So the Cassandra, she loves these cards. But she hasn't been like maybe three weeks. I hope she's OK. Um, if anybody knows the Cassandra, check in with her. Make sure she's okay. Um, all right, so we're going to ask our first question, or we're going to pretend to ask our first question from pre the pretend cards since we've already gone through that. And Doodle's in the room. Maybe he knew we were going to open a snack, but we're not. We're opening a beverage. Sorry, Doodle, no snack yet. You know what? I'm feeling magnanimous. We will give Doodle a snack. We will give Doodle a chicken treat because Doodle deserves a treat. There you go. There you go. And he's got it in his mouth. And he's going to chill. All right. Cool. That was interesting. Okay. So back to our question. Our first question is, what are the, the ingredients of a frap? What are the ingredients of a frap? Again, put it on the fake back burner. Pretend to turn it down on low and simmer. And let's get to our first beverage, which, again, is the Sangria. That's the name of the company, not Sangria, Sangria. Uh, melon Ramu bottle. Not Ramune bottle, Ramu bottle. Now, I'm interested to see, does this have a little marble in the top of it? We will find out. Ooh, did you hear that? I'm going to guess no, because basically what happens is in a, in a bottle of, of Ramune, that, that marble is pushed up to the top by the carbonation. So when I heard that carbonation come out, I'm thinking it probably does not have that marble. But let's see. It does not. We are going to pour that into a um, Bacon and Barrels Chumash Casino Resort from the Bacon and Bar Barrels uh, Festival that's held out in Las Olivas every year, um, where uh, Cue the Critic, if you know Cue the Critic, uh, earned the term the Bacon Jesus uh, because he wandered through the crowd with big plates of bacon handing out bacon. So, um, Q, if you're watching, just a nod to you, the bacon Jesus. Uh, let's pour this in here just so we can see what color it is. It is clear. I don't know what I was expecting from melon. I am also expecting, because this is in Asia, it's not necessarily watermelon, but it's some sort of melon. Kumquats and seltzer water. Yeah, but it was kel I, I'm trying to remember, uh, Tom, with the kumquats, with the juice from the kumquats, was it clear or was it like like orangey like the skin? And I think it was clear. I think it was. Um, ice cream for sure in the frap. Maybe. Coffee, water, sugar, milk. Sugar, ice, water, and coffee. Wow, this is interesting. It'll be fun. All right, here we go with um, Sangria Melon Ramu Bottle Carbonated Soft Drink Melon Flavor with real sugar. Kind of a weird smell. It smells kind of musty. I don't know why that is. Ooh. 
That's weird. That tastes that tastes like a, a honeydew melon. It tastes a little bit like honeydew melon. I don't know. Anybody know what that is? With that melon on that picture of that melon? Anyone know what that is? I don't know what it doesn't say what kind of melon it is. It tastes a little bit like a honeydew melon. It does have that taste. For some reason, it says they use real sugar, but for some reason, it almost tastes like there's a little bit of artificial sweetener in there. It has that kind of chemical taste from artificial sweetener. Let's see. What are the ingredients? Uh, carbonated water, sugar, natural flavor, melon, citric acid, and sodium citrate. That's all that's in it. I would say from a soft drink standpoint, that's pretty good. There's not a lot of uh, extra stuff in there. You know, but it's just really weird that uh, that it almost has this artificial sweetener, like hint of artificial sweetener in there. It says made with sugar, and sugar is in the ingredients. But yeah. hmm, really interesting. You know, I don't I don't know why I was expecting watermelon flavor. I shouldn't have been, um, but uh, but yeah, definitely like a like a honeydew melon flavor. I'm gonna give that a thumbs up. That's a, like if you're gonna if you're gonna have to drink a soda, that's the one to drink. And and again, it, uh, as opposed to being a carbonated beverage, you put sugar in it. It's no longer just a carbonated beverage. Now it's a soda. I think. I think that's what the what the uh, thing is. So yeah, I'm gonna get a thumbs up. That's gonna get a thumbs up for me. Uh, so let's go back to our question. And our question was, he says, pretending to read the card. What are the ingredients of a frat? Uh, so we got, uh, kumquats and seltzer water, which is awesome. Uh, ice cream for sure in the frap, uh, coffee, water, sugar, and milk, sugar, ice, water, and coffee. Um, let's see, was that it? I think that was it. I think that, that was all the answers. Well, the correct answer is milk, ice cream, and flavored syrup. And I know what some of you are saying, especially some of you on the West coast, you were saying, that's a shake. That is not a shake. As soon as you put the ice cream in it, it no longer becomes a shake. So a shake, uh, like for instance, if you're on the East Coast and you order a milkshake, a milkshake is milk and flavored syrup. That's it, milk and flavored syrup. Now, a malted milkshake also has malt in it, um, but it's a, it's a flavored it's fl uh, flavored syrup and milk. That's what's in a milkshake. As soon as you put ice cream in it, it becomes a frap. And so that's a big, that's a big, uh, the big difference is from the East Coast and the West Coast. On the West Coast, they consider milk, ice cream, and flavored syrup a shake. It is not a shake. As soon as you put the ice cream in it, it actually becomes a frap. So a little known and even less cared about fact. Um, and we can argue that point too. So I'm all, I'm all up for argument, which is interesting to seeing like, like coffee. But uh, that could be right. It could be coffee if you were using like coffee flavored syrup. You could have a coffee frap, sure. Uh, or it even use coffee flavored ice cream. Sure, absolutely. As a matter of fact, that sounds good. That sounds like it would be really good. Uh, ice, not so much. I think uh, once you add ice to it, I think it becomes a smoothie. I think it's a smoothie when you add ice to it. Um, it there's such a big difference between what a shake is, what a frap is, what a smoothie is, and everything. But I think a smoothie has ice in it, and what's, that's what differentiates a smoothie from, you know, from other mixed drinks like that. Um, I wonder if Starbucks still does affogato. Well, if they have ice cream, they do affogato. Um, otherwise, I don't know. Uh, we did affogato. What well, we we sort of did an affogato. We didn't we didn't use a hot um, I, uh, uh, espresso or anything. What we did was it was on um, on our um, coffee milk episode, our Rodan coffee milk episode. And so what we did was we put um, autocrat coffee milk syrup uh on uh hood ice cream and we made our own affogato that's kind of what we did it's not really uh really an affogato but it's close and we kind of did that but affogato is really good uh like i said uh starbucks would do it if they have ice cream i just don't know that starbucks has ice cream have you ever tried the vietnamese coffee at lee's coffee i have not is lee's coffee the same thing as lee's sandwich place that the place that has the banh mi is that the same lee's or is lee's coffee someplace specific and different Oh, I neglected to welcome Ryan Jones to the room. So everybody, welcome Ryan Jones to the room. You probably already have. You have. I see that. And No Man Land. No Man Land is back. Hey, got up early and just in time. Actually, yeah, we got an hour left. And I need to speed this up. 
because I'm yapping and we're not eating. So uh, I think we're just about ready to get into our uh, first snack. Uh, forever I thought malt was a specific grain. Yeah, not so much. I don't know specifically what it is, but I know it's not a grain. Um, frappuccino is a coffee. Yes, a frappuccino. It well, it has a frappuccino has coffee in it. I don't know what else is in it, um, but a frappuccino is something completely different. Uh, it wasn't really an avocado. They just pour a shot over the frap. Over the frap. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Hmm. That's weird. Uh, and uh, I meant Lee sandwiches. Oh, okay, Amy. Uh, no, I haven't. But uh, now that you mentioned it, I will. I will try Vietnamese coffee at least. I actually like Lee's. Uh, people. People kind of turn their nose up at it because it's a chain. It's actually pretty decent. I do like Lee's Bon Mies. So, uh, Caitlin, hey, what's up, Val? Frap is definitely a New England thing. I used to get them at either Brigham's or Friendly's when I was younger. I used to make them at Bringers, Brigham's when I was younger because I worked at Brigham's. So one of my jobs is working at Brigham's. So it is it is definitely an East Coast thing, uh, Frap, or call, at least differentiating between a Frap and a um, and a shake. In Southern California, in, in California, Southern California, a um, a shake has ice cream in it. Go figure. All right, so uh, let's start into our first snack. Time for another card. What is the consumption of insects by humans called? And I don't mean like you know people who live on you know, on insects because they live in in the desert somewhere and that's all there is to eat. I'm talking about like people who go out of their way to eat insects. What is the consumption of insects by humans called? That goes on the back burner again. No, I'll put this in the front burner. Why not? Why don't just change it up? Will we ever get to see you tipsy, Val? Uh, not on a live stream. Maybe on a uh, maybe on an episode. Although I'd have to be careful because uh, uh, YouTube has changed their rules, and I think I think they they dissuade people from getting drunk on on video. So maybe maybe not. Um, you know, maybe on um, uh, maybe on another uh, another platform that allows that, you know, like uh, Twitch or something like that. Maybe. So you you might. Uh, I can't remember the last time I got tipsy. Even though when I drink the beers, I don't I, I don't like chug them or anything. So I usually get that drunk. Uh, ma uh, malt is when you let a grain sprout and then stop it. That is malting. Learning that in whiskey school. You went to wit. I'm not surprised. Why am I not surprised that you went to whiskey school? Of course you went to whiskey school. I I should have seen that on your resume. Whiskey school. Um, let's see. Did I miss anything? Fun fact. Simpsons are more known for appearing in ads for the drink CC Lemon than they are for their own show. Damn, that's a lot of ads. Okay. Let's start our first snack. Our first snack is... Uh, I got to scroll back up here. Our... Um, Da -da 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 -da. Happy Star Chocolate Corn Crackers. And again, I don't really know anything about this at all. Um, you know, there's some ingredients in there. Um, we're going to try them. They look like uh, li uh, chocolate corn crackers. Somebody explained to me why Asian products are the most impossible to open. Maybe because they have to ship them from Asia. To the U.S. and they need to make sure that they don't open up, they don't get bugs in them. Ooh, they smell nice. They smell. I'm like I'm smelling cocoa. They might not even have cocoa in them. Let's see: cornmeal, sugar, water, chocolate, palm oil, sugar, milk powder, whey powder, cocoa, cocoa powder. It, uh, it's funny because it's a lesser ingredient, but it's really strong smell. Cocoa paste, soy lecithin. Artificial chocolate, artificial chocolate flavors. You got chocolate, chocolate in there. Why do you need artificial chocolate flavors? Palm oil, cornstarch, artificial flavor, and salt. Um, you get this. I mean, really, really strong cocoa smell. Just opening the bag, which makes me a happy star. Hey, Food Taster TV in the room. Good to see you, Food Taster. We haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. Good to see you, everybody. Say hello to Food Taster TV if you have not already done so. Um, Janice described it so much better than me. Yeah, uh, Janice is uh, Janice is the reg is the a, reg a regular font of information, and and um, I, I call her the um, the Indiana Jones of food. 
Uh, I like to do the bags that are thicker and more filled with air compared to American chip packaging so the chips don't break. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, and and uh, but but seal tighter so that so that the air doesn't get out. I suppose as well. Let's try these. Ah, uh, they look like little stars, sort of dark stars. Ooh, that's tasty. It tastes like a rice cake with cocoa powder on it. So when you eat it in this form, you get more um, more of the rice cake flavor. So that the rice cake flavor is stronger than the cocoa flavor. But still, they're light, they're puffy. They fall apart in your mouth. I mean, they just dissolve in your mouth. These are really good. I like these. It's a really nice snack. Thumbs way up on that one. Who knew? Somebody knew. They didn't tell me. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm so excited uh, because today I ordered a customized DQ a customized DQ Blizzard. It comes in a kit like from IKEA. Uh, I got their Reese peanut butter cup Blizzard and added a strawberry syrup to it. Haven't tried it yet, as in our freezer. All right, um, uh, food taster, are you going to do that as a video? If you are, let us know. Let me watch that. That sounds interesting. Um, Janice, I would think, I agree with you. It does taste a little bit like cereal. Like maybe like a, well, it says corn cracker. I'm, I'm, just, I'm saying like a rice cake. It has that like kind of texture as a rice cake. I don't know that it really has a corn taste either though. Um, but, um, but it definitely has that, it has that breakfast cereal taste to it. Like, um, it, I, I guess it's like, if you made a rice a rice cake, but you made it with corn instead, that kind of puff thing, that's, that's exactly what that's like. Um, and it has a nice cocoa taste. So um, interesting, Janice. Like, I'm wondering, what if I what if I treat it like a breakfast cereal? What if I, like, put it in a bowl with milk? How would that taste? I, th I think I'm going to do that, Janice. Maybe we'll do that as a, as a uh, live stream leftovers episode. Uh, not as a video today, but I'm recording my All Lay's Flavors video. And I'm extra excited for that. Well, we're excited for you for that. Uh, Val, I remember you made a parody of Leonard Skinner, That Smell, and said, what the hell is that smell? <laughs> I do that from time to time. All right. So uh, we had a beverage. We had a snack. Time for another snack. Uh, let's read the card. The, uh, the card, uh, the question was, what is the con doodle is like going to town in my hand here? I don't know. I never, When I say going to town, I mean like pawing it and uh, like putting it in his mouth and everything. I don't go there. Uh, otherwise, but he is uh, here. You know what? It's time. It's time for, for Doodle to show his cute little face to the camera. Everybody, it's Doodle. Doodle, over there. Doodle, over there. Over, there you go. There you go. No, look, over there. Over there. Look, it's you. But but they don't see. They see you, too. You know, I know you see you. You can't see them. And no, you're not going to lick the cocoa off my mouth or my hands. All right? So, so you good? You good, Doodle? We're good. All right. Good boy. Doodle, everybody. Um, all right. So our question was, our question was, what is the consumption of insects by humans called? And um, let's see. Janice Yamanaka said entomophagy. No Man Land said herbivore. Um, your... Um, I would say no man land. You, okay, the correct answer is entomophagy, because it says so on this card that, that doesn't say anything about that at all whatsoever. But you know we have to pretend. Um, <clears throat> entomophagy is the consumption of humans uh, insects by humans. An animal or creature or being or whatever you want to call it that eats insects is an uh, is not an herbivore but an insectivore. An herbivore is um, is an animal that eats only uh, uh, plant-based uh, material, you know, plant material, which is not the same as a vegan. Uh, uh, an herbivore is typically an animal, like a uh, deer. Deer are herbivores. Uh, rabbits are herbivores. Uh, iguanas are herbivores. They only eat uh, plants, uh, as opposed to a carnivore, which eats meats, or an omnivore, which eats everything. So, um, so uh, there are animals that eat insects like uh, armadillos, uh, aardvarks, uh, anteaters. 
they are they are uh, insectivores is what they call them. So we all learned something new. Entomophagy. I and I am an entomophage is I think what they what they call the person a person that does it. And I have a lot of friends that are uh, Dave Gracer. I think he's out of New York. Uh, David Gordon calls himself the Bug Chef out of uh, Washington State. Um, all all very creative. Um, eaters of bugs and uh, teaching you how to cook. One of the books in the bookcase up there is uh, uh, Eat a Bug. Uh, it was a cookbook from uh, uh, David Gordon, the bug chef. And um, there's a lot of cool recipes in there. I scrolled up. I missed stuff. I did not miss stuff. Okay, cool. So we did uh, beverage, snack, time for another snack. And let's go for the... Let's go with the Bay Tools. This is the Beatles. This the brand is the Beatles, and and this the Beatles prawn crackers. We're going to have the Beatles prawn crackers. I'm not even going to try to rip that. Oh, look at that! There's a little notch in there. I could have torn it over by the notch. Oh well. Ooh. It smells like it smells like dead crustacean shells. So it has that kind of funky, you know, like um, the, the funky smell that you get, like if you've eaten a cooked lobster and that lobster has been sitting on the table and you get, you kind of get the smell from that shell. That's kind of what that tastes like. This, let's see, uh, this, oh my God, where are the ingredients? Are they that tiny, 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 extremely tiny writing there? There are no ingredients. I have never, ever experienced something that has no ingredients. And, and, and here's, the, here's the odd part, is that um, there's a bunch of different things that look like different ways to, uh, to, to um, maybe, it, I don't know if it's showing it how it's made or showing how to make it. Like there's some dough and a rolling pin. There's, looks like a cup of soup. Uh, there's a microwave, uh, either a microwave or an oven. That's really bizarre. I mean, there's no instructions on here, so it doesn't say that you have to eat in a certain way. And remember, this is the one that uh, may cause cancer, so that's fun. They look like some shrimp chips, uh, little cups. If we were doing hot sauce, that would be so cool because you, you just put the hot sauce in that one. No man land. It's funny you should just mention that when I just mentioned hot sauce. I love hot sauce. Um, we um, for a while we were doing hot we were doing a hot sauce every week, but then my refrigerator got full of hot sauces, so I had to tone it down a little bit. So um, my go to my go to hot sauce, and I, I've told this story before, so I'm not going to repeat it. But uh, my my go to hot sauce is um, secret aardvark sauce, which is made in Oregon. And uh, and ironically, I just ran out yesterday, and so I just went out and bought a new bottle. So it's like uh, for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Always have a, bo a bottle of aardvark sauce on the table. Listen, I'm trying something new, but uh, aardvark, aardvark, secret aardvark is my my go-to hot sauce. Mm. No man, go go back. I think two weeks ago. Is it two weeks ago or last week? Uh, we did an episode with uh, Beyond Seattle Eats where we did the um, the Hot Ones Triple X, which is on the show the hot the Hot Ones, which I think is uh, first we feast. Um, they have a, it's usually the last dab. So it's the one, um, it's the one they give people last because it's so hot. It's made from pepper X, which is like hotter than a Carolina Reaper. And, uh, so, um, uh, so we did, we did that on like six chicken wings. We brushed it on six chicken wings and everything. So it's probably one of the hottest ones I've eaten, but it wasn't like, like horrible, crazy. No ingredients, pretty low in calories. Yeah. Like, you know, they make it out of water. Now, the thing is, it has a really strong um, crustacean taste to it. You know, I don't know if because it's a crustacean. And you can smell it. You can smell the, the prana. Flavor-wise, it's much, much more, more subtle. It tastes like maybe like a rice chip. Very, very light. Very, very light and airy. Crunchy. You can hear that. Not as much flavor as smell. So the thing is, I guess, like smell it while you're eating it, and then you get more of the prawn, you know, the prawn flavor because your nose is tricking you into thinking that it has more prawn flavor. And it really doesn't. So 
I mean, it's, it's really hard for me to give this anything but a thumbs up because my expectation level was I didn't have one. It, it, there's this cool bag of, of somebody in a, um, in a like lobster costume eating this chip. So, so like really hard to have an expectation level. However, I am going to give it a thumbs in the middle only because, like I said, um, you open the bag and you get that strong um, prawn smell. But uh, but not the taste, not not the taste so much. So um, so that's why it thumbs in the middle. I wish it had a little bit of, a little bit more on the prawn taste. But they're pretty. They're they're good. They're okay. Um, they're, they're more smell than anything else. Um, it occurs to me. I don't think that we asked a question. We did not ask a question before we um, we opened those and ate those. And I, and I I apologize to you from the bottom of my heart uh, for for being lax in what I've done. Uh, putting power, howdy, I'm late. Oh, not too late. We have another 45 minutes or so left, but welcome to the room. Where can you find that hot sauce? I'm going to the store. You cannot find it at the store. You have to buy it. Um, go to Heatonist's website. It's H-E-A-T-O-N-I-S-T. -E uh, the only place I've seen it, you can buy it off, off the website. I think if you go to Amazon, you might be able to buy it off there, but it's going to be more expensive than if you buy it directly from Heatonist, who is the company that makes it. So um, watch uh, Tybalt. Before you do that, watch the video first. Then, and if you want to, if you want to do it based on our review of that, then go ahead and do it because it's expensive. It's like twenty-five bucks per bottle. It's a larger bottle though, you know. So it's a bottle like that, but um, but it is expensive. It's in you know twenty-something bucks, which I don't. I mean, maybe some of the, the other hot sauces are are expensive like that and maybe worth it. How to check it out? I was going to ask, but forgot what made. What, when you made that opossum stew for a potluck many years ago, how did people like it? They loved it because I refused to tell them what it was before they tried it. So I said, oh, well, it is exotic meat, but I'd like you to try it. Tell me what you think. Everybody loved it. And then I, then they said, what is it? And I said, it's a opossum. And they're like, wow, that's really, really good. So, um, so yeah, people did. Unfortunately, I was, at a, I was at a private party, and so I couldn't catch people's reaction to it on video. So that's why you have me sitting there eating it. And uh, saying what it tasted like, but but the people at the party did like it. I liked it a lot. So we're going to start into our second beverage. But before we do that, I did remember we're going to do a card. So the question is, uh, and I know some people are going to know this one right off right off the bat and know know the answer to this. Uh, you should have said it was Mark from HR and then ran away laughing. Uh, that's funny. Um, well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a company potluck. It was a um, it was a friend of mine and a bunch of friends and everything. So that might not have worked there, but it would have been funny. Um, it's people. It's people. Opossums do as people. Um, okay, so our question is: What food is referred to as soft shell, Ipswich, or Essex, and what is the primary dish for which it is used? Again, the question: What food is referred to as soft shell, Ipswich, or Essex? And what is the primary dish for which it is used? That goes on the middle burner, because there is no middle burner, but there is no stove. So who cares? Uh, let that simmer a little bit. And let's open our second beverage, which is... Uh, where did I go with this one? Which is Taste Nirvana Thai Tea. I'm going to shake this one up. Hi, Doodle. No, you can't have any iced tea. Or Thai tea. Crab. What, uh, what was the question about crab? The um, on the chips. Oh no, that's you're answering the question. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna shake this up a lot. Then they get a little foamy, maybe. And um, you guys might might have noticed, but I did not need either Richard Simmons or Ariel today because these are all like you know, either pop tops or screw tops. So they get a break today. They gave them the day off. They're probably out the beach some, together somewhere. I go to, see, here's the thing about these plastic things. I go to peel it off and I'm peeling off the whole label. Yeah, there it's gone. Totally gone. And now we just have the bottle. So I have another bacon and barrels glass that we're going to pour that into. Ooh, that's a nice smell. It smells like, um, it almost smells chocolatey, but I don't know if there's any chocolate. There's no chocolate in it. It's tea. 
It has a very sweet smell. It's probably not as thick as some Thai iced teas I've had. And it's kind of an unusual reddish color. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a reddish brown. Cheers. Ooh, that's nice. Really sweet. Really sweet. But it is really, really nice. Um, again, they use milk powder in here, but it it, uh, it, it, it has that consistency of um, of condensed milk. It has that condensed milk consistency to it. This is really nice. Especially for something that's been sitting on a shelf in a bottle, um, as opposed to like, you know, where you go to a place where they're making it fresh for you. Really good. I am digging this. I am digging this a lot. I am going to give this a big thumbs up. That is going to be big, big thumbs up. So if you ever get to an Asian restaurant, I mean, Asian grocery, and they have this taste Nirvana Thai tea, I highly recommend it. Really, really good. But very, very sweet. So, you know, also, I don't know how much caffeine it has in it. So we'll see. Uh, this is our second beverage. I suppose we're going to, should we? We, we have to, don't we? All right, here we go. And may God have mercy on my soul. That's not what you would call good. But it's not terrible. Here's the thing. Because it's sweet already, the sweetness and the melon flavor isn't really, uh, it doesn't really throw it off too much. Um, it mutes the milky flavor, but it still has the same consistency. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Thumbs in the middle on that one. I think I don't think I would buy this. I don't think I would buy this combination. Um, but uh, thumbs in the middle on that one. We tried it. Let's go back to our question where it looks like there's a lot of people that retract. No, but. I'm sorry, Kay Blinn retra retracted two messages. Maybe it was two guesses that they changed their mind on. So the question was, what food is referred to as soft shell, Ipswich, or Essex, and what is the primary dish for which it is used? Uh, Philip Gerard, I am a little disappointed that you did not try to answer this, but it could be that you're not there. So, um, Oh, by the way, uh, Philip, you said, uh, Food Taster TV, how do we find your channel? Uh, go to YouTube and type in Food Taster TV, and you'll find his channel. He's, he's on YouTube. Um, it's just Food Taster TV. That's his, that's his channel. Um, what did I miss? Did I miss anything? I did not miss. Okay. Did not miss. Uh, so Food Taster said it has to be uh, British food. Am I right? No, unfortunately, to Food Taster TV, you are not right. It is not British food. Uh, Stoner Kitchen said crab. Uh, Cablin said clams, and the primary use for it is or primary dish for it is clam chowder. Janice Yam Yamanaka said clams in New England clam bake. Um, I'm going to say Janice, you're mostly right, mostly right. So uh, it is in fact clams. Uh, so soft shell if switch uh, or Essex uh, clams are a, a variety of soft shell clam, uh, soft shell clams that you get in New England. They are primarily used for steamers, or as they say in Massachusetts, steamers. They're for steamers. You get some butter, some papa, some oyster crackers, have you steamers. Um, steamers is um, is what they're they're typically used for. And as steamers are are the soft shell clams that are steamed, so they're not boiled. Uh, you put them in a basket, in a steamer basket. Um, so you would do that in a clam bake. And so in a clam bake, uh, you kind of have this big steamer, and you put layers of um, layers of seaweed in there and then it kind of goes through there and it cooks it like that so you could put steamers in a, a new england clam bake a new england clam bake is going to have lobster it's going to have cherry stone clams or the quahogs the, the the hard clams and everything uh it's going to have a variety of seafood it's like a it's like a seafood tower sort of uh but with new england seafood um so you are you you are sort of correct in which you would find it in a clam bake but typically it's just steamers so to make steamers let's see do we uh okay uh, I think, um, I, yeah, we did do a trippy food video uh, of steamers, and you can watch it. It's with uh, my granddaughters, Haley and Chloe, uh, Goonie, the Goonie Foods. 
and uh, and we are eating steamers, and they didn't like them so much. It's the texture, because when you're eating a steam a steamed clam, you open it up, you pull the the skin off the neck, and then you eat the whole thing, clam belly and all. A lot of people don't like that texture. They certainly didn't. So um, yes, soft shell Ipswich Essex are clams, and they're primarily used for steamers. Little known and even less cared about fact. All right, so we are it is time for us to do our third snack which is the, again, I'm going to be, I don't know if that's supposed to be a mushroom or it's supposed to be a hat. It's like a hat on the letter J. I don't know. It's Ni Mang Wan. If anybody, uh, if anybody understands uh, any of the uh, Filipino languages, somebody tell me what that means. I tried to translate it and I could not. Ni Mang Wan. Chicharron with especial sucat silly and I have no idea again no idea what that means so um, but we're going to eat them and try them so they are a vegetarian I think not vegan but a vegetarian um, let's see is it vegan I don't think it is vegan let's see the ingredients dehydrated no I think we went to the, the ingredients before I didn't see anything that would um, I didn't see anything that would indicate that there was any kind of animal product in it but it could be that one of those um, one of those things with a scientific name is an extract from some animal product. Or anything. I don't see anything on the label that says that it is um, uh, that it is vegan. So I'm going to assume it's vegetarian if it doesn't specifically say vegan. Oh, uh, cute! There's a there's a California Proposition 65 warning on this one as well. Uh, let's see, cancer and reproductive harm. It doesn't say what's in it. That's cool. All right, awesome. We're going to die. Uh, let's see. We did not ask a question. Let's ask a question before we dig into our third snack. And the question is, what is the name of the cooking technique in which food is sealed in a plastic pouch and cooked at low temperature? Again, the question, what is the name of the cooking technique in which food is sealed in a plastic pouch and cooked at low temperature? So we are going to put this in a plastic pouch and cook it at low temperature back there. Let that go for a while. And then we'll come back and visit that after we have our snack. Uh, let's see. Uh, be right back. Going up my customized DQ Blizzard out of the freezer. Too bad we can't watch that. That would be fun. Silly is a chili pepper. Thank you, Janice. That's a start. So hopefully these will be hot or spicy. Now these, I'm, I'm going to open them from the bottom because I am I don't know if it's a powder they put on it to make it spicy, but they will open these from the bottom. Asian packaging. Man, they package things to last, don't they? And it does have air in it. You can feel the air in it. The air has not come out. So it, they're pretty thorough in their packaging. It's funny. As soon as you cut into it, you can actually feel the air escaping. Ooh, that's an interesting smell. It smells spicy. It smells like it has some heat. It's not like a red color or anything. They look like, I don't know, it looks like it's something, that, like they peeled it off something. You guys can see that. Really interesting looking. Let's taste it and see. <coughs> Got that powder on it. Mmm, there's lime. It tastes like there's lime in here, which is kind of cool. Um, did they mention citric acid? Did I mention citric acid when I said this earlier? I did not mention it, and I don't see it on here. But it definitely tastes like there's lime or some sort of citric acid in there. Ooh, it's a sneaky spice, too. It sneaks up on you. You don't get it immediately. Immediately, you kind of get that, that acid uh, that citric acid kind of taste immediately. But then the heat sneaks in. Wow. These are really interesting. Now, <coughs> there's a variety of grains in there. Not one really stands out. But I think they do that on purpose because it's supposed to be cheat your own, right? So they don't want any one of those things to stand out. Mm. 
Okay, here's the thing. I like these. These are really tasty. Really tasty. I like these a lot. However, I'm going to give it a thumbs in the middle. And the reason I'm going to give it a thumbs in the middle is because it says peach and rum. And this in no way um, tastes like or even has the same texture as peach and rum. So I don't know why they call it peach and rum. They don't have to call it peach and rum. They call them plant skins or something. But uh, but it does not taste like chicharron. It does not have the texture of chicharron. Nothing about it reminds me of chicharron. Um, and so that's why it's going to have thumbs in the middle. Because because honestly, really good. Really, really good taste. That's the problem that I have with some vegan foods, or even some vegetarian foods, but, but especially with some vegan foods, is they call it something. And then um, as an omnivore, as somebody who eats everything, your mind goes there, right? And your mind goes, oh, this is supposed to taste like pork. And you eat it and you go, this tastes nothing like pork. So like, why did you call it pork? Just call it call it like plant meat or something else. Don't call it pork or don't don't call it chicken or don't call it, you know, don't call it what you're pre what it's pretending to be because it doesn't it doesn't match up with your standards as an omnivore of the of things that you've eaten. So don't call it that. So like I would I would love if they did not call this chicharron. You know, just call it like crunchy snack or something along those lines. And I would eat, I would eat the crap out of this, you know, on a weekly basis. So I have to go to thumbs in the middle only because they put chicharron on there and it in no way is, is similar or close to chicharron. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So let's go back to our question, which was in the machine. And our question was, what is the name of the cooking technique in which food is sealed in a plastic pouch and cooked at low temperature? And the correct answer that everybody got was sous vide. I'm kidding, it's sous vide. But it looks like sous vide, doesn't it? It's sous vide. Um, now, uh, who was it? Philip Gerard said, I sous vide all the time, super easy. Even easier if you have a, a Instant Pot. So you can actually sous vide in an Instant Pot. Uh, Instant Pot is like such an amazing thing because you can uh, you can use it as a pressure cooker, you can use it as a rice cooker, you can use it as a sous vide machine and everything. So it's it's pretty versatile. Um, I used to I, I used to uh, swear by my pressure cooker, but now that I can do the same thing in uh, Instant Pot, I just use I use the Instant Pot for everything. But uh, but yes, it is super super easy. Put it in a plastic bag. Put it in, in uh, I think water. It slow cooks over a period of time, and it, it's a, like all the natural flavor stays in it. Um, uh, it's tender, juicy, and um, yeah, sous vide is like a, um, a lot. Of most a, a lot of restaurants do that. Uh, it's not good for unless you have very large sous vide machines. Uh, it's not good for doing like ma mass produced stuff. But um, but for a lot of stuff, uh, if you're willing to to slow cook it and and maybe not have like a large amount for like a, a restaurant or something. Sous vide's way to go. So yeah, absolutely, Philip. You're right. Absolutely right. Easy and uh, not fast, but easy. I swear by cooking in cast iron. Uh, I do too, um, but you have to have it well seasoned, otherwise stuff sticks to it. But I, I do like cast iron. Um, I don't like the copper pans. I don't like Teflon plant, uh, pans. <clears throat> Although I will admit that my favorite thing to cook on is a, um, I don't know what you would call it, but it's the thing that you use to make uh, crepes with. And um, it's a it's like a like a grill that you use to make crepes with. And I make everything except crepes. I've never never, never made crepes on it, but it's such a great grill. Like I make bacon and eggs on it. Um, I make burgers on it. <clears throat> it's just a nice uh, flat grill that uh, it really the heat is just perfect for it. And um, and I use it for just about everything. So I, that's what I use to make my spam on. Not you know make my spam, but speaking of spam, Tom, old guy in Colorado debuted this he says out of frame uh debuted this on his um on one of his review boards and uh i said well i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to find that and i did find that uh i was actually doing a um an episode with him we filmed i don't know if it's the one that just came out tom remind me if it's the one that just came out i think uh and i had this and I was, as a joke, was going to. Oh yes, it was. It was when we did our uh, bacon weave tacos. When we did the bacon weave tacos, I had this, and I was going to, as a joke, um, add this into the bacon weave taco, but I forgot to use it. So this, um, Tom reviewed this on um, one of his review boards, and it is Celebrity Luncheon Loaf, and you can get this at the dollar store. 
did I get it at a dollar store? Or was it an, a, 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 like a Dollar General or something? I can't remember. But, you know, look around at, at your local dollar store, whatever your dollar store is, and you could probably find this. Um, Tom didn't like it so much. He just ate it right out of the can. I don't even eat spam right out of the can, but he just ate it right out of the can. If you were going to do that, I mean, I, I think the practical use of spam right out of the can is if you're going to make something like uh, like a ham salad, right? You might use spam right out of the can and not necessarily grill it. Um, for me, anytime I'm going to use spam for anything, I grill it. Um, I'm sorry, if I'm going to do it in like a stew, if I'm going to make or put it in like a, uh, like do spam simon or something like that, then, you know, then I, I won't necessarily cook it because it's going to cook in the broth. But other than that, I'm, I'm going to grill it. And, um, and he just ate it right out of the can. So um, I, I've eaten Spam right on the can, and it's okay, but he, but he got a really negative reaction to this. I'm really looking forward to, to trying this, and, and, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a new re negative reaction. The cool thing about it was the little key on the bottom, it, so you open it the old-fashioned way, which I thought was kind of cool. But <clears throat> men did manage to find that, and um, so we are going to uh, try that at some point in time. I don't know if we're going to do it like on live stream or, you know, somehow work it into an episode or something. But we will try that at some point in time. Thank you, Tom, for uh, for bringing it to my attention. I, I found it. Uh, it's fantastic you make a sauce with leftover juices in the bag. Amazing sauces. I'll bet pudding. I'll bet, I'll bet that's the case because, um, you know, like I said, everything is sealed in that bag. And um, and so you don't, you know, nothing gets wasted. Nothing evaporates. Nothing uh, gets, you know, boiled into water or anything like that. So. Bought an air fryer and love the buffalo wings from it. I've been told to buy an Instapot. Maybe I should. What grill did you say? I, I don't remember. It was a gift from um, it was a gift from um, Jeff Fu, and uh, he got it for like five dollars or something. Uh, I, I'll have to go back and see the brand or anything. But it it, it is a uh, whatever you call the thing that you make crepes on. Uh, it is an electric thing that you make crepes on, and it even comes with a little thing that you turn around and everything. But again, I have never made crepes on it, which is because I found it so, uh, it's small. It's about, you know, about that big. It's really versatile and everything I would use to uh, uh, either in a frying pan or a grill, um, it makes great, like uh, pancakes, uh, uh, burgers, uh, anything you would use a grill for. I mean, it's, it's just so handy and so cool. And uh, I don't think they're very expensive if you would have gotten by them. I will find out the uh, brand filled. I'll let you know. Uh, hey, Jesse Torres in the room. Well, we have some time left, and we uh, we still have another snack left to go. Uh, values the crepe maker as a flat top grill. Yes, that is correct, Janice. Um, I think that's what I said, but in a long term. Oh, a crepe maker is that what the, is that what you would call the thing? A crepe maker? I don't know. I, I'll have to check. I'll have to check. I don't I don't have the packaging it came with, but uh, it will have some information on the bottom. I will find out what it is. And Panama Red 72 in the room. I forgot. I neglected you. I'm sorry, Panama. But uh, welcome back. Uh, good to see you again. I thought the canned meat tasted like roasted sock from Foot Locker. <laughs> yeah, really looking forward to that. Uh, hey, Snackhead Cowboy in the room. Hey, it's late where you are. What is it? Uh, we're going on uh, like uh, half 10, maybe? Half 10 your time, uh, uh, Jack? Is that yes? No? Uh, Snackhead Cowboy from uh, Manchester in the UK. Um, if you guys missed it, we did a collaboration with uh, Snackhead Cowboy with our some of our UK snacks out of the uh, Liverpudlian shoebox of snack. Um, Jack joined us for that, and we did some um, we did some snacks. So it was a lot, a lot of fun. So everybody, please welcome to the room Jack, the Snackhead Cowboy from Manchester, UK. Good to see you again. Uh, all right, let's. We have one snack left. Let's go ahead and do that. I think we're doing okay on time. We have another like 20 minutes or so. We have one snack left. We're doing okay. We're doing good. Uh, yep, half turn. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. Um, I, I have to do that conversion in my head and everything. It's not always accurate, but. Uh, okay, question. So we have to ask a question before we dig into our next snack. And I will tell you that this next snack is, is shrouded in mystery, but it looks interesting. <clears throat> Sometimes I'm just attracted by, you know, the packaging on something. I don't know if that was, I think that was the case on this one. Uh, but it also looked like they had some interesting ingredients. Especially if you look at that. I don't think it looks like that, but that's okay. I mean, that is like a, it's a crab sitting on a cracker. I mean, it's a, it's, it is a whole crab sitting on a cracker. I don't think that's in here. It could be wrong. That'd be fun. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. 
Peter Griffin, you are from uh, the UK as well. Oh, okay, Southwest UK. So that's like, uh, well, I, I don't know. It's a big area. I would, I would be, I would be just messing with people if I just like tried to guess an area. Southwest UK is probably a big area. All right, so let's ask a question before we start into our last snack. And the question is, and think carefully before you answer this. What is honey composed of? Again, the question is, what is honey composed of? So we're going to sous vide this one. Let it, let it cook, cook on slow for a while. We'll come back to that in a little while. And let's open our, our last snack. And our, <clears throat> our last snack is... Uh, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to slaughter the translation on this, so please forgive me if I do. Uh, guoba, guoba is either it's either the company or the or what it is. I don't know. Uh, it is from uh, Dongguan City Sherg, uh, Sherg Food in Dongguan City, China, and it is Gua Wang Shiguang, which is crab and salted egg yolk rice chips. So that sounds good. It's just shrouded in a mystery. Don't know much about it at all. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? No. Okay. So far, we're so so far so good. Again, let me know. Okay, this is kind of cool. So, uh, so uh, again, solidly packaged and everything, but it looks like it's a resealable package. I think it's resealable. It, looks like it has that strip in it to reseal it. So to open this one, it's got this little tiny tab here. I don't know if you can see that. This little tiny tab. And you just pull that. It is resealable. And I just tore off the resealable part. Okay, good times. I opened it by tearing off the resealable part. Wait a minute. Yep, I did. Okay, good times. Well, I trashed this bag. Ooh, that's a, that's a strange smell. It smells like somebody made an egg and maple syrup breakfast cereal. That's what it tastes like. Like, I'm smelling maple syrup. How can I be smelling maple syrup? Is it, I don't see how this could possibly have maple syrup in it, but I am smelling maple syrup. Let's see, ingredients, rice, palm oil, soybeans, crab and egg yolk flavor seasoning, Sugar, salted egg yolk, salt, monosodium glutamate, edible glucose, crab powder from crab, flatfish, uh, cornstarch, yeast extract, silicon dioxide. Oh, I love silicon dioxide. It's my favorite. Uh, disodium 5, uh, ribonucleotide. Is that like DNA? Oh, my God. Uh, paprika. Um, aspartame. Aspartame is what's in um, equal. So it's a it's a um, sugar substitute, but it's the chemical sugar substitute, not like uh, stevia or monk fruit. Um, aspartame, um, egg, and edible cornstarch. So it actually contains, um, it, well, it says contain uh, as as a warning for allergies, contains eggs, soy, crab, and fish. But uh, but it actually contains crab. It's a product that says it has crab in it, and it actually has crab in it. So. But here's the weird thing: is it doesn't smell like seafood. I'm not getting a seafood smell. I'm getting a, a little eggy smell, and I don't know why. I'm getting a maple syrup smell from this. It's bizarre. I'm not having a stroke, am I? Uh, if, if if you guys see me fall down or something, please you know call 911. Here's the thing: I was going to take another sip of the um, Thai iced tea, and I have two identical looking things in here. So one is the Thai iced tea, and the other is the blend of the Thai iced tea with the melon rum, uh, ramune. Could be bad. Ten points. I got the Thai iced tea. All right. Here we go. I think you open it from the other side of the bag. Maybe. Uh, maybe you do. Uh, or maybe you cut along the dotted line. But they don't tell you to cut along the dotted line. They might tell you to cut along the dot, dot that line, but it's in Chinese. You could see that. Yeah, there. So, yeah. I mean, I totally screwed this thing. It's okay. Fine. 
I'll put it in a, a baggie or something afterwards. It has this tiny little tab that you must not pull. Yeah, maybe that's what it says in Chinese. Do not pull that little tab. You know, designed for people like me to pull the little tab. I, I can't help but I'm a natural born tab puller. Uh, all right. Ooh, it looks like checks. It looks like checks. Doesn't it? It looks like checks. Okay, no maple flavor. Why Why am I getting a maple syrup smell? That's bizarre. Ooh, corn. I'm getting corn. Was corn an ingredient? No, I said rice. Why does the corn one taste like rice and the rice one taste like corn? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, corn starch. Maybe that's where I'm getting the corn flavor from. It's bizarre, though. It should taste like rice, right? The rice one should taste like rice, and the corn one should taste like corn, and it's backwards. Philip, just guess, you know? If that's your guess, that's your guess. That that maple syrup smell dissipates. It doesn't really have a lot of... I mean, it's funny because it has a lot of seafood in it, but it doesn't have a lot of seafood flavor a little bit of salt you can taste the sugar in it tastes like an exotic check mix and i say check mix because it tastes like the checks with other stuff in it seasonings and stuff like that it's crunchy it's satisfying. It does have that kind of breakfast cereal taste to it under uh, on the bottom of it, but not not as sugary as breakfast cereal. Like maybe like Chex, you know, maybe like Chex. It's good. It's good. Um, I wish it had more crab flavor and more fish flavor, but it's not. It's not horrible. Um, no, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. It's gonna get a thumbs up for me. Uh, I had no no real expectation level in here because it was the like I said this whole bag is sh shrouded in mystery, so um, let's try a couple more. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thumbs up. Thumbs up on that one. That's a good snack. Okay, now. Let's go back to our car. Let's pull this out of the sous vide machine. Ooh, that's hot. Not really hot, but hot. All right, so the question was, what is honey composed of? So we had, um, I'm seeing, I, I have to go back and, and, and figure out if this was in regards to something we were talking about or an answer to the question, because Grub Wrap says glucose. And I'm not sure that he was, that that was the answer to the question about honey. Um, Linnea one says sugar water and maltose, so I don't know. Maybe maybe that is maybe that is the um, maybe that is the answer to the question. Uh, Janice Yamanaka says sugars, glucose and fructose from plant nectar. Um, let's see. Uh, Philip Gerard said is honey pollen. I think that was the, he was guess he was guessing pollen. Um, Jesse Torres said sugar. Uh, Snackhead Cowboy said honey is just sugar. Honey is a natural sugar, but it's not sugar. Like uh, you could say that um, maple syrup is also a natural sugar, but it's not sugar. You know, it's not like uh, cane sugar. Let's put it that way. Uh, sugar is such a loose term. Um, so, so the, while you're accurate, and honey is a sugar, it is not sugar per se. Uh, Jesse said hi, Doodle, because he came in. He saw I wasn't paying attention to him. He walked back out again. I bet he'll he will be back. So uh, you're all sort of right, uh, somewhat right. Um, let's see. I think Janice was pretty close. She's saying sugars from plant nectar, which is true. Glucose and fru fru fructose. So plant nectar uh, is definitely an ingredient of honey, but it's not the only ingredient in honey. So so that that part is correct. Um, glucose, I guess, is correct, uh, grub, grub warp. I guess you would be correct on grub warp. 
I mean, on, on, on glucose. Um, Tom, kumquats, uh, yes, that is actually the correct answer. It is kumquats. Uh, honey is made of kumquats. No, I'm just kidding, but it's funny. Um, and, it, and those who said sugar are sort of correct as well because it is, like I said, it is a, uh, it ha it is a natural sugar. However, ah, putting power to the rescue here. So putting power, you put yours and, uh, and Janice's together and you have the correct, um, you have the correct uh, ingredients for honey. Honey, honey uh, to put it on a very simple, in very simple terms, honey is made from plant nectar and bee vomit. Um, so bee stomach enzymes is correct. That's what's in the bee vomit. And uh, plant nectar is correct. Uh, as Jan has said, uh, glucose and fructose from plant nectar. Um, what a lot of people assume, because when bees go into a uh, flower to get that nectar, their leg back legs brush up against the, I'm trying to remember the parts of a plant, not the stamen, but the little part on the top that has all the pollen on it. Their legs brush up against it and they end up uh, carrying that pollen on their back legs. The pollen doesn't necessarily go into the honey. What the pollen does is when they go to one flower and they go to the next flower, they actually pollinate that flower by the honey, by the um, pollen that's on their back legs. So that's the whole thing. Um, I, I know that bee pollen is a, is a uh, supplement, is a, um, no, you can buy it as a supplement. But I don't know how they extract that. Like I don't know, they just like brush bees' legs till all the bee pollen comes off. I'm not sure exactly how that works. But um, but yeah, it's not necessarily pollen and and bee spit. It's plant nectar and bee vomit, or flower nectar and bee vomit. So yeah, uh, makes you all wanna just run out and get some honey, doesn't it? All right. So that is our. Uh, those are all our snacks. But they're not all our snacks. I mean, they're all our snacks, but they're not all our snacks. So let's have all our snacks. Let's see, what one are we going to start with? Let's start with the largest one that'll hold things. And I think, yeah, let's start with um, this guy, the fake chicharron. Let's start with a fake chicharron. Has that little, that little kind of cup inside on it. That'll be good. I like bee puke in tea. Um, I like bee puke on meat. Something like while you're cooking is to drizzle a little of the bee puke on meat. I don't think it tastes pretty good. Uh, depends on what you're making. Like chicken, it's really good on chicken. Maybe not so much on, on like, I, I don't think honey like really complements beef too well. And I, there's somebody out there that can prove me wrong though, I'm sure. Uh, only thing my vomit makes me call off is work a day. I haven't vomited since 1981. Just lucky like that, I guess. All right, so let us uh, choose one of these. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it, um, but uh, the crab and egg yolk uh, crackers. Let's get some of those. I think we'll do two, you know, those fit really nicely in there. It looks like, like somebody watching TV on their couch. All right, and uh, let's get the uh, one of these prawn crackers. Look like little spaceships. And last, and maybe least, a Happy Star chocolate corn cracker. There we go. That's not going to hold together too well. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? Cheers. Not good. No, the um, the cocoa and the and the saltiness and the the um, and that seafood flavor is funny because that when you have that that cocoa in there, it almost brings out that seafood flavor. And seafood and cocoa together, that's a big no. Texture-wise, there's not a there's not a wide variety of difference. The only thing is those prawn crackers; they're a little bit lighter, uh, but everything else is about the same texture. So texture-wise, it's not really crazy, uh, but flavor-wise, I'm pretty sure it's the cocoa in that in the Happy Star chocolate corn crackers that's that's um, 
kind of conflicting with the prawn crackers and the seafood that's in the thing that I can't pronounce. I mean, I can. If I try, really tried, I would be able to. So I am going to give that a thumbs down. I, uh, on their own, they're all great. I didn't, I didn't do one of these two yet. I started one of these. Um, uh, on their own, they're all great. I, I can't think of one that I don't like. Um, I just I, I didn't like the fact that they called this chicharron and it tasted nothing like chicharron. But flavor-wise, all three, all four of these really, really good snacks. And, and, and next time I make a road trip, I'm taking all those snacks with me because I don't like to waste. Which is why I will drink the entire Thai iced tea. Takis have wave style chips. Anyone up to review or try it out? Um, we did Takis. Which one did we do? I'm trying to remember. I have to go back and take a look. Uh, I, maybe it was on the live stream, but we did Takis before. I think we did the Fuego, the Fuego ones, the ones that turn your tongue blue. That was fun. Uh, we did those Takis. So, Jesse, if you if there's one that we, we haven't tried or the one that you haven't seen before, uh, let me know, and we will we will definitely check it out. There was a scorpion one. I don't know if we did the scorpion one. I think we might have done scorpion one. But let me know if you see one that we haven't tried, and we, we will definitely try it. So uh, we didn't answer that question, right? Yeah, we were, we, that was the our bee vomit question, right? Uh, it looks like a ruffle. The taki looks like a ruffle? That's weird, because takis aren't chips per se. They're, they're rolled tortilla. They are actually... Uh, when you eat the taki, you definitely taste tortilla, and more so than like a like a Dorito, which is like a tortilla chip. Even more so than that, you really taste tortilla in the takis. I think a lot of people uh, look down on takis and, and say like the flavors are really really kind of taste artificial. But maybe that's if they're doing like a like a you know hot, an extra hot one or something along those lines. But to me, honestly, um, it, it, it it's one of the few. Uh, tortilla-based snacks that really has a lot of tortilla flavor in it. That's why I, I kind of liked it. Um, so if so, I, I don't know. Wait, uh, this is you're talking about Takis as the company. Is that, if I'm not mistaken, Takis is owned by the same company that does um, what is the one that does Hot Nuts? What is their? It starts with a B. I can't remember the name of it. Hey, Stoner Kitchen, are you on your way out? Uh, okay, I I I successfully answered your question about um, uh, Guy Fieri earlier, correct? Uh, yes, Stoner, have a very good weekend, the rest of your weekend. Make it a very good one, and uh, we will see. hopefully see you next week. Uh, try Kettle Brand Dill Pickle Chips. They are awesome. Um, I, don't, I don't remember if we did. We've done some pickle chips, but I, uh, it, I don't remember if we've done the kettle ones or not. If not, yeah, we'll, we will definitely do those because we're always doing chips. I've got, I've got three more that we got to do. We'll probably in the next week or so, we'll probably do a, another uh, Goodbye Mr. Chips where we're doing the chips. Who knows? They'll show up somewhere. Takis are the same as Doritos but rolled up. Um, yes and no. They're the same in that they're made from the same thing, but um, but uh, Takis are rolled up and Doritos are, are flat. Um, the theory is they're both tortilla, like Doritos are advertised as tortilla chips. Takis are made from tortillas that are rolled up. So um, that's, but uh, maybe Takis, I don't know if they're both fried. I don't know what the, what the deal is, um, but um, it's just, to me, the Takis just have, seem to have more tortilla flavor than, um, than, the, than the Doritos. That's just me, maybe. Barcel, thank you very much, Stoner. Uh, Barcel, uh, I believe Barcel owns Takis and, um, and does their own line, which is the Barcel's Hot Nuts. So, um, yes, Barcel is the company. You're correct. Thank you, Stoner. Um, they are usually like mini fillingless taquitos. Yes, Pudding Power, you're absolutely right. You know what would be cool? If you could get like uh, one of those uh, food syringes, right, and fill it with uh, like a green salsa and inject it into the taki. That would be really good. I bet that would be really good. Then, then you're kind of making it into like a taquito. Well, no, a taquito is going to have like chicken or something inside it. And I don't think you're ever going to get pieces of chicken inside that. But uh, but that's an idea. That is an idea. I mean, maybe there's some scientific way that you could break down chicken enough that you could actually get it into that, and that would be a cool thing to do. I don't know what that way is. So um, let me work on that, though, because if that if I could pull that off, that would be kind of a fun thing. Yes, it is a Takis bag, but the chip is wavy style, not the normal rolled up. That is weird. 
Uh, I've not seen that. I will have. I will keep an eye out for that. I will keep an eye out for all the things that you mentioned, and we will check it out. Easy cheese inside a taco. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, because you can kind of squirt that in, I suppose. It's a potato chip with dill. Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the kettle ones. Yeah. I think we, we were talk. We were off on the um, on the uh, taki discussion. Smashed up lunch and loaf. Yeah, that would be. Ugh, mm. Yeah, I uh, have to track them down here in the UK. Lots of corner shops now stocking us snacks. Uh, U.S. snacks that'd be that'd be kind of cool. Holy cow! Look at the time. Uh, we did have enough time to cover all our snacks. I didn't know that we were because we got off on a tangent, and but that's okay. We had enough time, and um, and we had a good show. We, we uh, uh, you guys were in entertaining to me. Love the camaraderie. Love our little uh, community. And, um, and I really look forward to every Saturday of, of you joining us. So so thank you all so much. Oh, by the way, Philip, you came in later. Uh, I think you came in later. I don't know if we do, do you mention that we're going to be doing something with Philip on the show. I don't know if we mentioned that or not. Oh, also keep in mind that uh, Tom, uh, old guy in Colorado, has his uh, live stream at, in two hours, two hours from now. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. Um, he is doing a uh, live stream. Um, a live um, board review, I think. Um, again, um, barring any unforeseen circumstances, we will see you same bat time, same bat channel next uh, Saturday. But again, thank you for joining us. Um, have a wonderful weekend. But remember, that's crazy out there. So please take care of yourselves. Definitely take care of others. Be careful. And we will see you soon. Bye, everybody.